so here's an update on the uh, SS16, uh, now known as the Nasty Suburban. So, the core command, the 20 horsepower core command's all rebuilt, uh, bolted in the tractor with its new Midwest Super Cub 2 and one header. Um, it's just a fresh rebuild, just new rings, cleaned everything up. Um, it's got a new transaxle because the old one down here, I was trying to get the hubs off and I cracked the whole back of the transmission. It comes all the way around and up. I'm trying to get the hubs off. So I had to get a new transmission. This one's locked, fully rebuilt. Um, all the bearings have been gone through and cleaned. Whole transmission's been cleaned. Um, welded, welded it. Um, so engine's in, bolted in. I picked up a new, oh, new to the tractor, uh, Equus RPM tack. I guess it changes colors and all that crap. And apparently, there's two different ways I can hook it up. So I'm gonna mess around with that a little bit. Um, I have an oil catch can right here. I'm gonna put on it. Um, when you go to put one of these, uh, um, all right. So if you're gonna put one of these engines in one of these tractors, one of the biggest problems you're gonna have is down there with your spark plug. It actually hits the battery. Well, it doesn't hit. You're not gonna be able to get a spark plug wrench in there to get your back your spark plug out. So what I'm gonna end up having to do is I'm gonna take the shield off. And I'm gonna cut like a U out of the battery train, probably just going to remove the shield, but um, another problem is on the frame bolting it in, is, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it right there, right there, there's like a piece of metal that they weld, it's the L, it's there for absolutely no reason, um, and it's going to hit your bolt, so it's going to be a pain in the ass getting that in, but uh, it might, you might be lucky and it might not be there. I don't know if it's on every tractor or not. Um, it was kind of a bitch to get it in, but it's in. I gotta get a new belt because this one's too small. Um, I'm gonna have to extend the header out because it's, if you look, it's obviously not gonna clear the hood. The hood is over there. Um, so I'm gonna cut it right, cut it right here. And right there and I'm gonna take the stock exhaust which I have right here I'm probably gonna chop that little bit out and I'm gonna extend it out on each side just weld it so it comes out on each side clears the hood because I'm not about I don't want to cut my hood and the hood does clear the shroud just barely clears the shroud right here so yeah uh, I haven't started it yet I still got to wire it up and stuff um, That'll be today's project. I'm going to run a push button start, hopefully. I'm going to try and make that work. But um, I got to still do my throttle. I got to put oil in it. Uh, the gas lines run. That's all good. Um, I have to. I have. I bought a full seal and gasket kit for this engine. I still got to do the carburetor. Hook up the catch can. Hook up the RPM tack. That's um, left. I got to remake the support here because it was going to hit the oil filter there and I have to take this out of time to take the oil filter out so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend it up so it goes to that hole right there so and then I can start making it look good again because it's covered in fingerprints and oil and grease especially the hood I'm going to repaint the front rent wheels might change those out for a little smaller I don't know yet but um yeah I'm going to try and capture the first startup of it on camera because this is not start after the rebuild so it's choked out it is choked. Clip you guys just saw 
it was only running on one cylinder. It was only the front cylinder. This back cylinder is not running on that cylinder. Um, I think it's a bad coil. I'm hoping it's a bad plug, but I highly doubt it. So I'm going to pull this plate off so I can cut the hole I was talking about back here in the back of the um, battery tray so I can get the spark plug out and put a tester on it. See if it's getting spark. If it's getting spark, then it's um, not necessarily a coil. So I'm going to try a plug then. If not, then it's going to... Um, still working on the wiring a little bit. I got most of it ran. I just got to connect it all to my kill switch and start button. Sorry for the little bit of dust here. I was drilling in the dash. So here's your... You flick that up, hit that, and press. It's going to be a push button start. I made this yellow plate that goes under here, and I got a, not a fancy like off and on switch using race cars, but I put a push button there. Uh, it's just a cheap tractor supply one I just picked up. I've had this for a while, so just flick that and press it. And this is also the kill, so just go like that. It kills it. Uh, I still got to hook up the RPM tag. Camera's, there we go, back to focus. Um, it's just going to go right there, I think. Um, i kind of been looking at the wiring. I'm not 100% sure on how it hooks up. And it came with this nice key. I guess it clamps onto your spark plug. I says on the box, I think there's two ways it goes. It says one goes to the coil, or one can either go to the spark plug. I'm not sure yet, so. All right, so I cut yeah. some uh, out of the dash here. Just enough so the battery can still stay there because it came from right here over and there's the spark plug tip so there was no way to get the boot off and the boot sticks out quite a bit so look at it there's about no room to get the spark plug out so I had to cut that out so I ground it all smooth so now it's good so now I'm going to throw the battery back in put spark plug tester on and see if it's getting right, spark so on that plugs cylinder. on both cylinders but this is the back one let's see if it's got spark Still got spark, but it's not it's not running right. So now it has me to believe that it's not a spark issue, it's a fuel issue because there the front one the back plug um it will not run on the back plug, but it'll run on the front because I unplugged that one. Started up, ran like crap though, on the one cylinder over here. Pulled that one, put this one back on, it would not start. I pulled the plug. It's bone dry. It looks brand new. Uh, it's not getting fuel on that cylinder, which would make sense because I did everything but the carburetor. The carburetor so, kit's right here, so I'm going to throw the kit in, the engine, and hopefully that's going right, to so solve. The engine is fixed. Um, the problem was that the valves were not um, closing. They were staying open all the time. So um, the parts are ordered for that. They should be here hopefully tomorrow. Um, right now we just have the valves um, gapped so it runs so they close. Um, I forget the exact name of the part was but the wiring is all done. Tachometer's in. Tell here. It's got a light. And we got this other switch and the push button's wired in. See if it'll go. Yep, so it runs now. That was a little cold start, like a two-day cold start. But now I gotta pull this wheel off, take the belt guide off, pull the belt on, go get a new belt, put the belt on, see if it um and we can drive it. I gotta put the um the shroud's not on right now because to take the valve covers off I had to pull the shroud. I'm not gonna put them on because the parts haven't got here yet, so yeah.